up guys? So we're here in LA about to check out Dave's Hot Chicken to see if the food is good. We got a lot of recommendations on my Twitter and Instagram for this spot, so I'm excited to try it. Alright, so the moment of truth, we got the food here. I ordered a number three combo. Let's try out the chicken tender. I got it medium because I'm kind of a pussy. a nice slice of white bread which is into that old school feel. Damn that's good. I wonder if I can recreate this. All right, guys, next time you're in the L.A. area, make sure to check out Dave's Hot Chicken. The food is fantastic. I'm going to do my best to recreate this recipe. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell and enable notifications as well. All right, first things first, we need one and a half cups of buttermilk, some all purpose seasoning, one egg, one fourth cup of pickle juice, two tablespoons of hot sauce, a little accent and cayenne pepper. Into a large mixing bowl, we're going to add all those ingredients for our brine. The good thing about a buttermilk brine is there's some acid in the buttermilk and in the pickle juice which will help tenderize the meat. Season it up with a little salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. You can add more or less hot sauce and cayenne depending on your spice preference. This recipe is pretty spicy guys. Which is why it's important to taste as you go and adjust the flavor to your preference like I always say. Once you got all of your ingredients into the buttermilk, we're going to break out the whisk and mix to combine. Once that's done, we're going to get started on our chicken. Today we're using four boneless, skinless chicken breasts. These are about six to eight ounces each. Now at Dave's Hot Chicken, the chicken tenders are pretty large, so we're just going to cut these chicken breasts in half, as you see me doing right here. Repeat that process for however many chicken breasts you're using for this recipe. I'm making the number three combo, which was chicken tenders and a chicken sandwich. Once the chicken is sliced up, we're going into that buttermilk bath. We're going to cover that and place that in the refrigerator for two to four hours or up to overnight if you got a little more time on your hands. Allow that chicken to really tenderize and soak up all that flavor in the brine. Next, we're moving on to everybody's favorite thing, which is coleslaw. At Dave's, they put coleslaw on the sandwich, so we're putting coleslaw on ours as well. Going in with some buttermilk, some Duke's mayonnaise, of course. Duke's is the only acceptable mayonnaise in your refrigerator. Don't forget that, guys. Going in with some lemon zest as well. And we're going to use the juice of half of one lemon. There we go. Add some nice freshness to cut through some of that fat from the buttermilk and the mayo. Now, I know some of you guys hate coleslaw, but trust me, my coleslaw recipe is super legit. Give it a try. Went in with some sweet relish going down with a little chive here also just for a pop of color and some freshness. Speaking of fresh, we're gonna grate one to two carrots here, enough for about a quarter cup or so. If you don't like carrots, you can leave them out and just use the cabbage, no big deal. Speaking of cabbage, we're gonna use angel hair cabbage for this recipe. If you feel like it, you can shred up your own cabbage at home, but it's nice to just buy it in the bag. Give that a nice mix, taste as you go, adjust the seasoning to your preference. For seasoning, we're gonna use a little salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder, which is my all-purpose seasoning. Tastes good on pretty much everything. There we go, nice and creamy, a little bit sweet. Going in with a little bit of sugar. And there you have it, folks, the best coleslaw that you've ever had. Throw that on a pulled pork sandwich, take that to a cookout. Pop that in the fridge until we need it, and now we're gonna make our dipping sauce. Now, the dipping sauce at Dave's was really good, so this is my uh, attempt at recreating that. I'm not exactly sure what they put in it, so I'm making my best guess here. Going down with some mayo, a little ketchup, about a teaspoon or so of garlic paste. 
a few dashes of worst word in the world sauce, pinch of sugar just to balance everything out, and a little salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. Also going in with some smoked paprika for color and the smokiness because the, the sauce that they had had a little bit of a smoky note on there, so I'm thinking that they might have used smoked paprika. And if not, then mine's probably better anyway. So we're gonna whisk that together, give it a taste just to make sure you got it right. And if you do, go ahead and pop that in the refrigerator till we need it. And now we're moving on to our breading. So we're going in with two cups of all-purpose flour here. If I can get it out of the jar. Come on, Matt, there you go. Some salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder. A little bit of accent as well. You can really use whatever seasoning you like on poultry. Also going in with some cayenne pepper to add some more heat, a little smoked paprika as well. Quick reminder guys, all of the specific measurements and ingredients can be found in the description box below. Don't forget to taste your flour just to make sure that it's seasoned adequately because if you don't, you're just guessing. Now it is time to get to work. We are going to drain off some of this buttermilk because we're going to be double dipping. So drain off that buttermilk into a separate mixing bowl. Go from your original mixing bowl into that seasoned flour, coat the chicken evenly, shake off any excess flour, and then dunk that back into the buttermilk. Shake off any excess buttermilk, and then we're gonna go right back into the flour. And you have officially double dipped. And this is the only time that it's acceptable to double dip. There we go. This is gonna make sure that the chicken is nice and crispy, has a nice thick coating of that delicious seasoned breading that we have. Be intentional about this. You do wanna lay it out on a baking sheet for about 15 minutes just to let that flour really adhere to the meat to ensure that it stays on your chicken and not burning up at the bottom of your fryer. Looking good. Go ahead and get that oil up to 350 degrees. We're using peanut oil today, but vegetable oil will work just as fine. Do not overcrowd your fryer because if you do, you're gonna drastically reduce the temperature. You wanna keep your temperature at about 350 degrees the entire time. So we're gonna fry this in batches. We got three chicken tenders in the grease right now, looking for a nice golden brown color and 165 degrees internal temperature. Once we reach that, we're gonna place the chicken on a wire rack to allow it to drain and not on a paper towel because we don't want soggy ass chicken. There we go, looking good. Next, we're gonna make our hot sauce. You need a quarter cup of oil that you use for frying, followed by a quarter cup of butter. Once that butter melts, we're gonna go in with two tablespoons of cayenne pepper. I know that sounds absurd, guys. Going in with some smoked paprika, a little salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder as well, and two tablespoons of brown sugar, thank God, because we need to balance this thing out. This recipe actually originated from a wife that was trying to get back at her husband because she was angry at him. Do better ladies, we'll talk about that later. And he ended up actually really liking the food, so that's where Nashville hot chicken came from. We're gonna bring that up to a simmer over medium low heat. Once everything gets well combined, we're good to go. We're gonna fry up some crinkle cut fries because that's what they served at Dave's as well. You guys know how to fry a frozen french fry, so I'll spare you the lecture on that. But just make sure they get nice and crispy. Here is our beautiful chicken tenders that we fried up. And we're gonna brush on that hell sauce. Super spicy, a little spicy for my taste, but it actually came out really good, even for me. Now, if you're not a fan of spicy food, you can reduce that two tablespoons of cayenne pepper down to one tablespoon. Or if you're an absolute savage, you can go up to three or four tablespoons. Here we go, going down with that sauce that we made, a couple of dill pickles, a little bit of that coleslaw that doesn't suck and one nice big chicken tender. And there you have it, folks. That is my Nashville hot chicken sandwich. We're gonna plate this up on a slice of Wonder Bread, a couple pickles, a couple chicken tenders, a little dipping sauce, and some creakle cut fries. And that, my friends, is a Dave's hot chicken number three combo, not in LA. Quick little money shot, and you know we're gonna go in for a taste test. Guys, please pray for my mouth. All right, the moment of truth. 
gonna go ahead and dunk that in the sauce oh man that's good that buttermilk brine really tenderized the chicken added tons of flavor the sauce is good the coleslaw is going to cool things off thank god definitely needed that can't go wrong with fries the dipping sauce was great guys you got to try that and last but not least let's take a bite of this delicious sandwich say a couple hail marys Oh man. I fuck. Shit. Needed that water to save my life, guys. Hope you enjoyed the recipe. That is my copycat Dave's hot chicken recipe. Hope you enjoyed. If you're ever in LA, make sure you check it out. Don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button. Hit that bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.